Is Skeleton Crew exactly what the Star Wars doctor ordered? Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new to the channel and a Star Wars fan or on the fence about Star Wars, hit that subscribe button. We talk about it all the time. Objectively, sure. Am I a fan? Sure. Have I loved everything? We won't get into any of that. That's not important. Today I'm going to talk about Skeleton Crew, the new series coming out in the Mandoverse, created by John Watts and Christopher Ford. And I gotta be honest with you, when I heard about it, I was like, okay, cool. Then you heard it was gonna be like an Amblin film from the 80s, kind of Goonies in space, maybe a little Stranger Things. Okay, cool. Saw a trailer, I said, all right, that looks like fun. People were complaining, it looks like it's for kids. Well, Star Wars is for kids. No, it's not. The problem with Star Wars is it was made for kids 40 plus, almost 50 years ago, and the kids it was made for are now adults who want adult content, but Star Wars wants to make Star Wars content and George Lucas isn't involved, and that's a whole other argument. So there's a lot of things working against Star Wars right off the bat. So you have to find like this perfect balance of, is it for kids, is it for adults? How do you drive the two? And you can absolutely 100% do that. They haven't, I don't think, found that formula. They might have found it with The Force Awakens, but that movie had its own issues in terms of you know the mystery box and asking questions that they didn't feel the need to, to, to answer. You know, you gotta have an answer if you pose a question. But all that said, so Skeleton Crew is coming out after the disaster that was the Acolyte. Acolyte came and it failed. If you're a fan of the Acolyte, that is okay. You are allowed to be a fan of it. And if you didn't like it, that is also okay. You don't have to like it. But facts are facts. It was canceled because the, the numbers weren't high. People did not tune into the Acolyte week after week. Here's the deal. Skeleton Crew has a lot riding on it. I did this video for Rebel Scum Podcast uh, like a month or two ago. There's a lot, a lot, a lot riding on Skeleton Crew. Because the Acolyte failed, and because they haven't had a movie in years, and because people have found like the Disney Plus series have been in a, a steady decline since Mando Season 2, basically, Andor is like, I think Andor is so good, it's like the pinnacle of Star Wars, but you have a lot of people who are like, it was boring. Some people didn't feel like it was very Star Warsy. So, uh, you can't, like, it's hard to argue both, I'm a big fan of it, but it's hard to argue both those, because it's subjective, obviously, but also, they do make great points. Like, what is Star Wars is, like, really the question you have to ask. Nobody really knows. So, Skeleton Crew now has this task at hand that, that it didn't go into this being. It just kind of fell on its shoulders now, where it's kind of like, if this show doesn't hit, what's next? I mean, I know Ahsoka's coming, and we have Ender Season 2, obviously, in Ahsoka. But what is next? Like, where does Disney and Lucasfilm, where do they stand? Do they proceed to make more? Iger recently said they're only going to do one a year because that's going to solve the problem. The problem is there's no plan. The, the, that's the problem is they need to have a plan. Like, why does this show existing? Why is this existing? And one thing that I think Skeleton Crew has working for it is, A, they said there's not going to be any big cameos, no secrets, things like that. It's kind of its own thing. But also it's set in the Mandoverse. And the Mandoverse, look, even if you didn't like Boba Fett or Ahsoka, at least you understand that there is that there's a plan in place there. I think you can agree there's a plan in place, especially, especially with Boba Fett. It had a beginning, a middle, and it ended. Like, Boba Fett's story was complete. They told this story, and they ended it. You don't need a season two. Even if they were like, we're canceling it, it doesn't need one, so there's no need to even cancel it. But that's not the case with everything else we've really kind of been getting. Like, the Acolyte kind of was like, well, where's it going from here? But the Mandoverse, like, you have an understanding that they have an idea of their through line of where they're going with things and that's why I kind of that's why when I first heard Skeleton Crew was going to be in the Mandoverse I was a little bit more excited about it than I would have been if it was its own thing because you understand that kids working in this era this time frame where the powers that be have a plan supposedly we would hope but it seems like they do Filoni's going to do his movie we got Mando and Grogu coming out but also if Skeleton Crew fails the next thing we're getting is Andor Season 2, which is very different from Skeleton Crew on every level. And then you have the Mando and Grogu movie. And so I don't think Andor is going to affect the Mando and Grogu movie, but Skeleton Crew will. It's got the same aesthetic, the same feel, and it's in the same time period. So that could greatly affect Mando and Grogu. Now, Grogu, I think even though people might be a little tired of him, I think he still sells. I think he's an easier sell. I think that's going to get butts in the seat. And the budget of that show is, is, is tiny. So Or of that movie, I should say, is tiny. So I don't think... Get earning its budget back, I don't think it's going to be a problem. How much more on top of it they make, that's the issue that they're facing. But I actually have, and I didn't, like, I would say a month and a half ago, I didn't have faith in Skeleton Crew, but now I actually have full faith in it. The embargo lists December 2nd, so you've probably seen this around that time. 
The embargo is listing the date that it is released. Now it's releasing a date early, so the embargo is going to come out a day before. I'm not concerned with that. Usually this might be a point of concern, but I'm not because Star Wars has its own thing. Here's the thing. Like either you like Star Wars or you don't like Star Wars, and, and now it's like it's so like set in stone your feelings on it that I don't know what a critical or fan response is ultimately going to even mean for this show. And when I say fan response, I mean the ones that you see online, like 97% Rotten Tomatoes, 35% Rotten Tomatoes. I think what's going to determine it is going to be the viewership numbers. That's all that's going to count for this show. The critic rating is going to be what it's going to be, and, and the fan rating is going to be what it's going to be, but this, it's, the, it's the numbers that you see on streaming that's really going to tell the tale of where Star Wars is and how well this did for Star Wars, because the buzz around it has been incredibly quiet. I was telling my wife about it earlier today. She didn't even know it was a thing. She didn't even know it existed. And I was telling her about it. And she's like, oh, I'll watch it. And and so, so yeah, I, I am excited for it. Now, the run times of the first three episodes have kind of leaked, and they've been somewhat confirmed by people who have seen it. I reached out to some friends I know who have seen these episodes. I have not, but I have some friends who have seen them. So these are the run times uh, of the first three that uh, that were just tweeted out by Cryptic 4K Qual, Cryptic over on Twitter saying episode one's 47 minutes, episode two, 29 minutes, episode three, 37 minutes. Uh, minutes, which would make them on par with traditional Disney Plus Star Wars shows, which is very short. And a lot of people are saying, oh my god, it's too short, why are they so short? I'm not one of those people. I'm Look, I'm really enjoying the Dune show, but it's like an hour plus every week. And, you know, Penguin was like 50, 50 plus minutes every week. I'm not gonna lie. Those shows are heavy. Star Wars Skeleton Crew especially is not gonna be heavy. I don't think I need it to go that far. I really enjoyed Batman the Cape Crusader and Ninja Turtles, Tales of, of whatever it was called. There were two animated shows that came out in the summer. I enjoyed both of them, and both of them had episodes that were 22 minutes long or so. And I didn't complain. It always felt complete. So if you can tell a complete story and you only need that amount of time, that's why I don't have an issue with it. Now, it, it I felt this way with Mando Season 1 and 2, and since then, and yeah, I think Boba Fett, I felt, I felt worked in the length as well. But it's the shows since then that you feel like they kind of get cut off. You're like, what happened? This, oh, the episode's over. You know, there's no satisfaction. You don't feel like you got a full episode. And that's the one concern I would have with the shorter runtime. But like I said, Mando 1 and 2, and I think Boba Fett, I didn't have that issue with. The later ones, though, they kind of start to feel that way. So I hope that, like, like, you're on streaming and you have a budget, obviously. But I hope that they're the length they need to be to tell that isolated story in that time. Like, whatever that episode is, it needed that amount of runtime to tell it. Like, that's the only thing that actually should matter, right? Is if, oh, man, this story was told in 50 minutes, tell it in 50 minutes. Oh, this story was told in 22 minutes, 22 minutes. If it's a seven-minute short film, I've seen a lot of really good seven-minute short films. I might have made one. People don't talk about it. You forget about it. You don't need a lot of time to tell a good story, but you have to have a good storyteller to tell a good story in a short amount of time. The other thing that has me very excited about Skeleton Crew is the list of directors. Look at this thing. This thing is insane. Episode one is John Watts. Episode two is David Lowry. Episode three is David Lowry as well. If you don't know who David Lowry is, he directed The Old Man and the Gun, the live action Pete's Dragon, which is pretty good, The Green Knight, which is underrated gem in my opinion, and Ain't Them Body Saints, which is a phenomenal film. It's like 10, 11, 12 years old, whatever it is. Now, that is a phenomenal film. If you're a, if you're a film lover, that's something I would suggest you check out. After him, we have the Daniels, who are coming off of everything everywhere all at once. You can't beat that. If, you have, if you're putting a list of directors together, how do, you even, how do you even stack up to that? Jake Schreier, who is doing Thunderbolts, who people are saying is like the best MCU movie since like Endgame. Like they're saying it is the best, like it's a really good MCU movie. I don't, I mean, I don't know anybody that's seen it personally, but this is the word that you hear. Like people are saying that it's really good. Like be ready for Thunderbolts. Bryce Dallas Howard speaks for herself. Huge resume with Star Wars already. Has done some phenomenal episodes with The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. And you're just excited to see what she's going to do in this world. 
Lee Isaac Chung, who did Minari, which is a phenomenal film, and Twisters, which I thought Twisters, you know, as a sequel, not even like a like a like like a requel, like just a like I guess it is a requel, but then you know it's not really connected to the first one. It was a fun summer blockbuster. You don't get a lot of those anymore. It kind of new, like check the check yourself at the door, grab some popcorn, sit down and eat it, and it was a lot of fun. My wife and I had a good time watching it. It's not like spectacular, but it can handle action and special effects, which I think might be important for a show like Skeleton Crew. And then we wrap it up with John Watts once again. Look, John Watts, obviously everyone knows his Spider-Man work, but Cop Car, Kevin Bacon, Cop Car, what a great little film that is. That's the one that kind of got his foot in the door and everything. That's where everyone knows him from, like the Marvel stuff. I, when I watched that movie, I think it was like uh, like a month or two later after I saw it, they announced that he was doing Spider-Man. I was like, bring it. Let's go, John Watts. Let's go. And his, I know his name's kind of been thrown in the mud recently like in the dirt like people don't really like him they think he might screw up spider or whatever i think he did a great job i think again he can handle everything and this you know, i think this is more of a passion project than we're giving him credit for i think he loves star wars i think christopher ford loves writing like loves star wars and that's why i think this is going to be good i just think there's i just think there's so much talent behind this show Phil Tippett is back overseeing the stop motion did the original stuff it's going to look good you know you got Teak, they brought back Teak in this. There's a little going to be little callbacks here and there. Nothing like crazy cameo. Like obviously Jude Law is going to be Snoke. This is going to be a fun show. And I think what this show is going to do is it's not going to save Star Wars necessarily. But it's going to say, hey, remember the joy Star Wars brings you? Remember that? This is it. You got that. You got that. Like already, I can already see the comments in this video are very tiring. Very tiring. I haven't even posted this yet when I'm saying this, but I already know they're very tiring. <laughs> but I have faith. Let me know what you guys think. Do you have faith in Skeleton Crew? Are you looking forward to seeing it Monday night? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, I will be doing reviews and recaps and videos as the series goes on. I can't wait to see it. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. Until next time, may the force of others be with you.